Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with another episode of Soundjack's Rambles. And today I am here with Alyssa. Hello, everyone. And only Alyssa. Uh, today was, I was hoping it was going to be uh, the most amount of people on the podcast today. Uh, but that did not happen. Unfortunately, no one Potter were. Hope, I was hoping they'd be on here, but unfortunately things got in the way, so they weren't able to make this very off-timed recording for this very, very off-schedule podcast. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of stuff got in the way. But darn it, life. darn it, we're going to get it out this week still, and because it is about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Star Wars, we're talking about Star Wars, we're talking about Star Yes, we are. <laughs> I think I hit the last note a lot better this time around. <laughs> yes. But we'll see. I'll probably still hate the way I sing when I'm looking at this later. So. Yeah. Shrug. Yeah. No, uh, we, we've been starting and stopping. We're on a new recording method of recording this. But anyway, uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi came out in theaters last Friday. Um, the mm -hmm. Friday, the, 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 the 15th. 15th. Oh, 15th. I jumped the gun there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Whips. Mm -hmm. Uh, the eighth Star Wars episode in the franchise. Um, and a lot of very, very differing opinions on this particular oh, film. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I actually, because the last time I saw a Star Wars movie was The Force Awakens. I haven't seen Rogue One yet, and I know I'm going to get a bunch of nerd rage at me for that, but I, I can already see <laughs> Soundjack sound showing me that he has a Star Wars shirt on right now. And uh, I'm already specifically a Star Wars right Rogue One shirt. Oh! <laughs> it's even better. Uh, yeah, so... Um, that's the only one I haven't seen amongst all the Star Wars movies. And I haven't, uh, when after I saw The Force Awakens, I didn't ever really go into to see, like, how does the rest of the, you know, fan base slash general audience feel about the movie? I was kind of focused, my opinion, my, my opinions of what other people thought was always focused on me and my friend group. But this time around, I thought I would, you know, delve into the interwebs and see what people thought. And boy, howdy, there's some... There's some uh, dissent in the ranks about this movie. It seems pretty split. Um, I'd probably say it, it probably skews a little bit more towards the positive than like negative, but it is still pretty a pretty mixed bag for like the general consensus. Yes. Um, but Alyssa, do you want to uh, give a brief summary of Last Jedi? Very <gasps> minimal. Very brief. Very very brief. Okay, yeah. All right, so The Last Jedi, uh, also this is going to include spoilers for The first, the, 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 the Force Awakens, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen that. Yes. Go away. Um, <laughs> uh, it centers, or it picks up right where The Force Awakens left off. Um, we see that uh, the uh, rebels, um, or the rebellion, is attacking the First Order with a bunch of, like, bomber ships. The Resistance. The Resistance, Thank you. So there's a lot of weird similar names floating around. So, and they start. They try to bomb some star destroyers, right? Star destroyers, I think. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, the attack goes awry, and lots of people die, and um, that happens. Um, and, and mostly, the point is that the the the, the rebellion is right now uh, not doing so hot. And that's kind of its own storyline. We have Finn who resuscitates, and um, basically there's this whole thing about the First Order is trying to get the Rebellion and snuff them out, and you know, it's sort of a race against time to try and not have the Rebellion fall or the Resistance fall, I guess. And then we have another, the other main storyline, and probably the main main one is Ray goes and meets up with old Luke Skywalker and um, confronts him on the island he's at, which I think is called Anktu. I don't actually know if that's the way you pronounce it or if that's right, but someone can correct me later. Um, 
And basically, he is resistant to teaching her the ways of the Force because he event- he uh, tried at one point but failed because, you know, Kylo Ren turned to the dark side. And basically, the most of the movie is Rey trying to learn about her past, trying to learn about the ways of the, the, ways of the Force, and also trying to, like, she discovers that there's that she has a link with Kylo Ren and... They, and then she's trying to get him to turn ways and come back to the light side. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens, lots of hijinks, lots of space battles, lots of stuff. You got some some flying mouth cat things. You got some BB-8 being a wisecracking robot. Like, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens in the movie. And I'm sorry my... Um, my summarization isn't as succinct as it normally would be, but I just recently saw this movie and it's since there's like two related, but kind of separate plot lines, it's hard for me to know where, what to spoil and what not to spoil. What's a spoiler. What, what's not a spoiler. So everything is a spoiler. <laughs> Everything is a spoiler. Don't if they, if they're watching it, they're in the wrong. So go ahead and spoil away. Okay. Well, I think that's, pretty much the summary of the plot I, I don't know did i miss anything key that you think the audience needs to know about this movie mm, i mean for a summary god i don't know okay yeah I, I guess like i said because this movie has like sort of an a plot and a b plot and to some extent a c plot uh it's kind of hard to know like how to summarize those things but basically i guess the point is is that um one one half concerns Ray and Luke, and the other half concerns the resistance. So. Yes, yes, that's the main <laughs> thing. Yes, um, but yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. okay. So, yeah. uh, I think we we both saw this movie diff- at different times. Yes. I know. I saw it. I saw it uh, on a Sunday matinee. Because I was like, you know what? I'm not going to bother on Sunday, Saturday. I'm just going to go Sunday. And I actually wasn't that packed of a theater, which I was pretty surprised by. But at the same time, that probably made a lot of sense because the theater that I went to had four different screenings of it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it was pretty unlikely to have a packed theater unless I like went on opening night or something. Yeah. And also the theater I went to isn't the most popular theater nearby. Like There's an AMC that's near where I am. So that one gets a lot more traffic than the one I went to. Um Probably because they can also hold more seating, and they have like bigger stadium seating. So yeah. But are you? How did you see it? Or uh, I saw it, see it Saturday. I saw it with Noah, um, and <laughs> so when we walked in, um, mm-hmm. I, well, no, not when we walked in. I went to use the bathroom before the movie started, and I, I was walking back in, and a guy commented. Uh, I overheard a guy saying, "Well, this movie has to be good. It's a Marvel movie." I mean, I, I feel like that's a little more on the nose than they probably meant it to be in some ways. I, I still feel like they are 100% serious. I mean, probably. Uh, I know I've heard a lot of people do. But, I have heard that comparison being made. And I don't. No, no, no. Like, I think they think it was genuinely made by Marvel. Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. They weren't making a jest that Lucasfilms and Marvel were together. I think they were genuinely serious that they thought this movie was made by Marvel. Oh, okay. And people at Marvel. I, I guess I can see why they didn't make that mistake. I guess now that Marvel and Lucasfilms are kind of under the same parent company, but it, no one the confusion was happens a bit more. Hmm? But no one from either side was involved, just the, just the Star Wars No, I know, stuff. I know. Yeah. I, but I can see why people would make that mistake. Is mm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and then when I was watching it, uh, there was a power outage. Oh yeah, you told me about at that. the theater. <laughs> when did that happen exactly? Right after Rose kissed Finn. Oh no! Literally that same moment, she collapsed after the kiss. The screen went black, and we were That's all, guy's- and we were like. Well, time to wait for the ninth movie. Someone was like, 10 out of 10 out of ten would Star Wars again. Stuff like that. That's pretty great. Um, but I mean, we, I, all, we that got... That actually happened to me when I watched uh, Toy Story 3. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to be a little tangent, but I was watching it for the first time. And like the theater had a 
power outage right at the moment where the toys go into the are get it get dumped into the garbage and go into the go towards the incinerator, which is like right at the like twilight hour of the movie, eleventh hour of the movie. So you're like, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's yes. going on? Holy crap! And yeah, so that's when it cut out for us. But like the worst part is that it didn't just go black. It like the sound faded out first. We're like, Ooh. and then <laughs> and then it started like flickering. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We got a refund though, and I got to see it again in theaters. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> restart. They restarted it for us. We saw it. Got to see the whole battle scene again. Uh, and on. then they still gave us a free ticket uh, to any movie. So that's great. Yeah. So next time you do a movie podcast, you can use it. Again. Well, when I'm back home, because I was back in PA. Oh. So. Good shucks. thing it doesn't expire anytime <laughs> soon. But anyway. Okay. Yeah, this was a little tangent, but you know, fun, fun movie, fun movie theater stories. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I guess before we move on into the real nitty gritty, itty bitty spoiler territory, uh, what did you think of the movie overall, Michael? It was really good. It was wonderful. Cool. Uh, I thought it was good. Um, it's weird because I think I'm at that stage where I'm sort of like, like I, I liked it. I definitely liked it a lot, um, and I also I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but I know there are parts. There are parts of the movie that, like, I, I, I'm still waffling on whether I like it or not, and mm. I've been chewing up, chewing at it a little bit in my head. I still definitely recommend going seeing it. I think the visuals alone are enough, are worth the price of admission. So even if, even if the, cause, uh, even if you're not like totally invested in the characters, I still think there's some amazing cinematography in this movie. It's wonderful that for that reason yeah uh however i probably would caution if you didn't really like force awakens i p- would say you probably wouldn't like this movie yeah mostly because it focuses a lot more on the new characters so if you didn't like the new characters if you couldn't buy into them at all you're probably not gonna like this one because it focuses way more on them than on any of the older characters um if you did like the force awakens you're probably more inclined to like the flash jedi however i don't if you're a big star wars fan i'm I don't know where you're going to fall on this one, to uh, be honest. Yeah, uh, they're probably not going to like it because uh, let's talk about that. Uh, there, uh, has been a talk- pe- there has been a petition going around, if you didn't know, of yep. wanting to make Disney strike the, the Last Jedi from the Star Wars canon. Um, and they are most, and the reason they're doing so is because they're offended by the portrayal of Luke in this film. Yeah. Mostly um, over so I, him. So I guess we're going to jump into spoilers then? Yes, we're definitely in spoiler territory now. I mean, I guess we should just probably spoil one of this entire thing. Yeah. And I'm guessing any, any good person would not go into this. Cause I, cause we all, cause the last Jedi is such, I don't know. It, it's something that's had a lot of hype around it. So yes. Um, but yeah, uh, from my understanding, and I'm looking at the petition, um, mm-hmm. which for some reason has over 50,000 signatures. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, it, the most of it was focused, Most the main reason why was focused on the, the legacy of Luke Skywalker and the Jedi. And it being, quote right. unquote, completely destroyed. So, I don't. Okay. So what? The, so in case you a need a reminder or b we don't care about spoilers. What they're refer? I think what they're referring to here is how probably that a Luke well wanted to kill someone. So is that, and also because the Jedi are, I guess they're sort of portrayed in a less favorable manner in this movie. Like, there's talk about how they, you know, Luke doesn't really think fondly of the Jedi. He thinks that they're a failed force in, in some ways. Uh, force. <laughs> <laughs> they're, a fail, they're, a failed, they're a failed thing because, you know, I mean, he points out even the fact that, like, the Jedi allowed Darth Sidious to rise from their ranks, you know. They, they are in some ways implicated in his, his rise to power. I mean, they didn't like. I guess he's implying more that they were apathetic towards his rise rather than like actively trying to make it happen. 
Um, and I mean, I haven't watched like all the prequels in a while, so I don't know how honest that is, but I do think that there's, I, I think that there's evidence to that in the prequels. Um, especially considering yeah. that, you know, Anakin was a Jedi and then he turned to the dark side. So, yes. um, I, I'm trying to think, is there any other things? Like, cause I think the big one that people probably didn't like was the fact that Luke wanted to kill Ben. Yeah. That's probably the one thing that I can see I, fans like getting real upset about. Yeah. Um, or of him being a grouch, I guess. I mean, I don't know. from my best understanding, it's my feeling is um, in part, um, and we've talked about this a little bit, that like in part this film is to the fans in a, in a bit of a meta way. Probably, yeah. Um, I with think, it, I think it not, is uh, with them trying to, with this film trying to say, do not idealize everything in the past. Yeah. This is this movie def oh I'm sorry. It's not per everything's not perfect. Everything's not hunky dory. They the Jedi are not blameless. The previous films are not without fault. Yeah, it, the I, main I do th- think there is sort of that meta commentary underscoring the movie. Yeah. And it's time for new generation of fans, which is symbolized by the little kid using the force at the end of the film. Yeah. But the problem is the dead, the, the not true fans, but the I fans that really have like watched fans. the movies thousand, hundred, like dozens upon dozens of times, read all of the previously extended universe novels and commentary and extra material that star Wars, that the disney has mostly stricken from canon yeah are upset because that's not what they have grown up with and adjusted to and this is a new star wars yeah i that I does quash a lot of the formerly long held views of the jedi and the and the skywalkers yeah. And I, I mean like, okay, so one of the things that I've, I think I, I definitely want to say when it comes to criticism of anything, whether it's book or movie or TV show or whatever, one of the things that I think one of the advice that I've gotten, not necessarily to me, but sort of implicitly that I think I've, I think is a good thing is this idea of judge something for what it is and not for what you want it to be. And what that essentially means is when you, you know, it, let's say you're watching like a, a historical period drama or whatever, and you don't like it because com- it doesn't have enough comedic elements in it. And you like comedies more. That criticism that there aren't enough like action moments or there aren't enough whatever moments that sometimes can be a thing that you want from the movie rather than something that would actually help the movie as it is. Cause like Mm -hmm. a period drama piece might be trying to be more serious and, you know, straight up comedic antics might not work or skew the movie in its favor. I guess cause I, 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 I was, I worked a lot with writing. One of the things might be like, you know, if you prefer books that have a lot more snippy dialogue in it, but snippy dialogue doesn't help in the help like make the book better. That would be a case of you attaching criticism for what you want to see in the book rather than what would help it. So the best way in short, the best way to criticize something is to understand what was att- the attempt that was made and what the filmmakers or the writers or whatever were trying to accomplish. And then sort of saying, okay, what are the problems? How did that vision fail? As opposed to what my vision is and how that failed. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. I feel like I'm probably not. <laughs> but basically my point is uh, is that you have to sort of separate your like personal tastes from the objective like movie, I guess. And so what I'm saying is, is that in this case, Luke Skywalker... If, if you take umbrage with the fact that Luke Skywalker, you know, or that the Jedi don't necessarily live up to your personal expectations for what they are, 
you sort of have to think about it like rather rather than saying this is what the Jedi should be, the criticism should be based on the previous movies slash this movie itself, the way that Luke and the Jedi were presented failed for the vision of the movie. So like within the movie's context, that's where the criticism should come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry if that was like really confusing. I, I even while I was talking, I was like, I gotta make sure I explain this in a way that makes sense. I think um, I got it. You're saying that um, people shouldn't be criticizing um, the portrayal of Luke and the Jedi based on canon that is no longer there, but as the new canon says it is through this film. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's that's basically what I'm saying. Because I, like, congratulations, it's an alternate universe from all the other stuff. Yeah, and I, I think that, I'm, and I'll, obviously I'm not trying to, like, I think that there's, I think it's fine to feel upset that, you know, if you preferred Luke Skywalker as portrayed in the extended universe books to Luke Skywalker as portrayed by the movies, that's fine. I think that that's, you can have that opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I don't think is okay, at least from a critical standpoint, is to sort of impose that expectation onto a film that was never whose goal is not to represent Luke Skywalker in that case. Mm-hmm. Like, I think if you felt when you're looking at the movie, you're saying Luke Skywalker's presentation as in this, in the last Jedi does not jive with how he was in the pre in like the, in the original trilogy or like he was out of character as compared to those movies. I think that's a fair criticism. Like it, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily true, but I think if someone said that and said, that's why I don't think Luke Skywalker is portrayed correctly, I'd think, okay, that's fair. If I, if someone said, I don't like the way he's portrayed because, you know, all this extended universe stuff, I'd say, well, this movie is not part of that. And because it's not in canon anymore, it doesn't really, like, that's not what this movie's trying to do, I guess. Yeah. I would I would assume that it, it's a fair statement to say that this the last Jedi wants to be in in contingency with the previous movies. Yes. And so that canon is fair to like compare it to, but I don't think it's fair to compare it to something that the movie makers aren't really even considering yet when it comes to creating the movie. Precisely. And that's probably why Disney did strike a lot of that extended stuff from the canon because there was so much of it. But not, and the general public knows a lot about the main Star Wars films, but they don't necessarily know a lot about that extended Star Wars canon. Yeah. I mean, I, don't, I probably don't think anyone would mind if they took inspiration from those books. Absolutely you not. Know? But there was way too much to make sure that they were keeping in canon with, especially with where right. they're setting these films. So, like, right. that I understand, but I can also understand from a dedicated fan perspective that, like, how that can feel crappy. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I I don't know m- pretty much anything about the extended universe. Like, really, like really, my only exposure to Star Wars as a franchise has been through the movies. Yes, I got. I haven't watched any side cartoons. I haven't wa- read any comics on it. None of the books. Only the movies. Mm-hmm. And I I think that from what I've seen, um. I think that Luke's portrayal here makes sense to me. Yes. You know, in the in Return of the Jedi, there was, um, I mean, Luke was conflicted in some ways. There was this undercurrent theme of will he turn to the dark side? Like there was this, there's this sort of feeling that he, mm-hmm. he was could be seduced. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like the camp teens being like, "Let the hate flow through you." You know, like. There's, I got this sense that Luke could, has the potential at least to turn to the dark side like everyone does. Um, and so the fact that he had like these dark feelings in him, I don't think comes out of nowhere. He's a person. Sometimes that happens. Um, we all have things inside of us that we don't like to admit or are afraid of. And I think the fact that Luke is like on an island on his own goes to the point that he regrets it. And I think that that's also important too. Yes. Um, but, I mean, I have no idea how it was portrayed in the extended universe. I don't know how yeah. it differs, but, but I think within the context of the movie, it works. But going off your point, 
um, is in part why I do really enjoy this interpretation, let's call it, yeah, of of Luke and the Jedi, because mm-hmm. it's always been portrayed the good versus the dark, the good, the light versus the dark side of the Force, with mm-hmm. the Jedi being the light and therefore the good, and the Sith being the dark and therefore the bad, right? Making them completely polar opposites. One's good, one's bad. And in that mm-hmm. kind of context, it's very easy to lose the – how do I want to phrase this? The, um, the gray part of it. Yeah. The, the gray, gray part. Of it. Mm-hmm. Because nothing is wholly good and wholly bad. Right. There are some morally – some darker aspects of the Jedi. Sometimes they do bad things. There are some times that the Sith do good things. It's not restrictive. A yeah. Sith cannot do only bad things, and a Jedi cannot only do good things. Mm-hmm. But it's the and the reason why Luke wanted to end the Jedi is because he rec- he recognized um, the hypocrisy of assuming that the light side of the Force, the light users of the Force can only do good and that they can do no wrong. Yeah. And I no, yeah, I do. And it's also just a good like note that no institution is going to be 100% good, but as long but as what I believe Luke figures out by the end of the film, as long as they try their best, mm-hmm. it is worth it. If they do very wrong things, then of course um sometimes that has to be taken down but if there is enough good to redeem it that substantially outweighs the bad and the bad things are not entirely catastrophic or anything or mm-hmm. incredibly terrible that the institution should still have the right to exist yeah and i think yeah i, I do i do think i think what um I think what I'm, I think something that the movie provides is sort of this. It, it sort of gives you something to chew on when it comes to thinking about the, the Force and the Jedi, and you know how or how they are and what they do. Um, and I think and I think Luke's struggle of you know this disgraced quote unquote Jedi who failed his apprentice. Um, fits in well with the theme of failure and the theme of, you know, what do you hold on to from the past? What do you, do you learn from it? Do you destroy it? I mean, cause like literally the conflict of the movie, it can almost be summed up by Kylo Ren's line of let the past die, kill it if you have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, this well, idea of, the Ray part. What? The Ray part. Well, yeah, but it connect. I think that this idea of him doing that connects to the theme, the greater theme of your relationship to the past and your relationship with failure. So from that perspective, I think that Luke's <laughs> failure and what he did makes sense. Yeah. Now, I will, granted, I haven't seen like the original trilogy in a while, so maybe this isn't, isn't congruous with how he was portrayed in the pre in the original trilogy. I mean, years but, and years have passed. So Yeah. His change is based on age, him aging and learning, more, right? As no opposed to how he's exactly portrayed the there, where he was a young, he was a young Jedi. Yeah, a lot of he's he's grown. He he's older now, so yes. there is that too. There yes. is that element, and I think that's a good thing that you bring up. Yeah. Um, what were you gonna say before I <laughs> interrupted you? <laughs> um, I may want to challenge what you what you're saying. The main part, the main point of the movie is okay. Um, because while what you're saying is very substantial, um, and you, hmm, I mean, you can can probably connect it to what I'm about to say, but I'm going to roll on my whole, um, looking at, uh, this good, bad, this good, evil dichotomy. Okay. Um, that I think has a stronger purveyance in the Finn part of the plot. Okay. Because... Um, but because we do have to talk about that at some point, and this is also a good yeah. way of getting into that section. Um, because yeah, yeah, yeah. three main things we got going on there are mm-hmm. 
um, Poe and his conflicts with um, Admiral Holdo. Yes. Um, the the casino planet. Which is the one thing that I've been flip flopping on this whole time. And the DJ and uh, the code breaker, who I don't think was never ever named in the film, but is referred to as DJ. In the credits. Yeah. Okay. And all of them um, have this work on this whole good evil dichotomy. Um, yeah. Starting with the Holdo thing, um, we are seeing it from Poe's perspective, and Holdo is not be not saying, "Hey, this is what we're doing." So Poe is like, mm -hmm. "Okay, we got to do something instead of just nothing, mm -hmm. instead of running until we're dead." Mm -hmm. um, and then tries to lead a coup to, because he thinks he's going to do the right thing, but then turns out Holdo is actually doing the right thing and had a plan. Mm -hmm. That General Leia agrees with it, which was run until they could get to their safety planet. Yep. Which was the plan all along. Mm-hmm. Um, showing that um, even people that seem to not know that you shouldn't always question people in power, which that one's yeah. a slightly, I find to be a slightly more curiosity of a point in this time period currently um <laughs> but I mean, their I, their point is like still it, valid it's still a very valid point i think i think it the that lesson quote unquote that poe learns is a little bit less sort of counterweighted by the fact that snoke dies in this movie mm -hmm. like i feel like if i mean i guess in some ways it, it's still sort of enshrined like you know, if there's if the military's on the right side, then don't question them. But if they're on the wrong side, then do. Yeah. It is a little muddled. And I know a lot of people have, yeah. I, like I said, I've read a lot of, you know, criticisms. And I, I think that there is a lot of, I know a lot of people have been going back and forth about Holdo and Poe and, like, how that whole thing happened. Yeah. And, like, you know, like, should, like, Holdo should have, like, said something and, like, given, like, at least more of an inkling that something was going on and, like... I think I do think I agree in the sense that a lot of that plot was more in service of Poe's character growth. Like yes. I feel like a lot of that was sort of set up to sort of teach Poe a lesson. Yeah. In that, or or at least sort of subvert our expectations because there is sort of that trope, you know, like the young, rebellious, youthful upstart shows the curmudgeonly old status quo who's boss. Yeah. That. They should get out of their ways. And, like, and I, you know, at first when I was watching that scene, I was like, oh, God. I was so dreading it because I was like, here's another, you know, woman in power who has to be shown by her male counterpart how things work. And, like, oh, uh, this is so overplayed. But then it turns out that she was doing something good in the end. So I was yeah. like, hey, I appreciate that they didn't follow yeah. through with the trope the whole time. Yeah. And so I definitely, I think they were definitely trying to subvert it subvert the trope um and that's how I you guess, and and that is the way you can connect that part of what i'm talking about of the of that to like um the destroying the past kind of plot uh, yeah theme which yeah. does go in favor of let's not destroy the entire past completely <laughs> yeah i think yeah a lot of it's about you know yeah. learning from um the mistakes of the past and yeah. what do you hold on to? What do you destroy? Do you destroy it? Do you, yeah. yeah. The, um, yeah, I, 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 I probably that, that subplot, maybe I can see why people might not have liked that subplot. There were, it was a little shaky and a lot of it relied on miscommunication. Yeah. Which is sometimes a little bit of an out, you know, like it's kind of a cop out. I don't know. I, I, mean, I think in some ways, if you, I think since Poe is a likable character, I kind of bought it, even though I, I, it wasn't, it was flawed. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, they, uh, so. another criticism with that is that like he's the rebel, he's the rebellious upstart that wants to fight first and do suicide runs and all of that, and then yeah, hold those last act is to do a crazy suicide run. Yeah, that's true. Go and By the way, that that look. <laughs> Blew me away. 
I was, my jaw was like on the floor when I saw that. That looks so beautiful. Not only because, because like when she first starts to move the ship, I'm just like, oh, she's going to like put her ship in front of the cannon to like block oncoming fire. So she'll like take a hit. Okay, cool. Still noble. But no, she freaking. Light speed smashed. Through the entire ship. And just that one shot of like this thing with it just totally silent. Mm hmm. That was some amazing cinematography. Yes. <laughs> and sound design. Like, A plus jobs for whoever did that. A, A plus 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 plus. Um, and I know, I, I know, and I know I've seen a lot of people who are like, well, this, who are now going all like, well, you know, why don't they make like hyperdrive like bombs that if this was all possible and like, you know, eviscerate armies. And I mean, I guess that, that, that's fair that, it's sort of like the eagles in Lord of the Rings, you know, like once that happens, you're like, well, why didn't they use this before? But I, I think I, I, I mean, on one hand, it's probably pretty energy intensive because reaching the speeds of light, you know, no I mean, how also she's probably it, dead. Like, hmm? also that was probably, that was a suicide run. So, you know, they're, they're, they're dead. And everything yeah, blew up. That's, that's fair. I don't know. People, I know people were like talking about that. Um, but I, I think, I think in a lot of ways it's sort of, it's it's sort of more about the emotional impact, I think, rather than like the logical impact. Ooh. And I, I guess I guess I don't know how how you weigh that depends on the viewer, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but like that scene, a plus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome scene. Yes. Um, continuing <laughs> on um, with um, the questioning institutions thing. Um, yeah. The casino planet. Which, ah, like, we kind of, yeah. like, get get planted on our face about what that theme is there uh, from Rose, yeah. yeah, one of the new characters in the film, and is wonderful. What did you think of Rose, actually? She, I liked her. She was good. Okay. I, I was kind of questioning what she was up, what was up with her when we first saw her. Right. And then we actually got the whole, let's, let's do our own plan to to stop them from killing us plan. Yeah. And then she got involved and like, okay, yeah, now I'm, now I'm chill. Yeah. Now I, I liked her. Um, I think that, I think it's really interesting how you sort of, I, I think a, what's really great about what I thought was really interesting is like, I mean, we don't, we don't, we know, we found out more about her background went on the casino planet, but I yes. feel like you could still really tell that she really cared about her family. Like, yes. Like, and that sort of idea of holding on to the past again, like the fact yeah. that her, you know, she had that uh, necklace yeah. that her other half belonged to her sister who died. And, you know, like this idea of like, hold, that's the one thing she has left of her. So she's holding on to it. It's really valuable. So like, again, like, what do you keep of the past? Um, the casino planet. <laughs> so my thing about that subplot is that I I get why it exists. For yeah. one, it probably would be really boring for that subplot to just stay on the ship. Yes. You know, you want to put the whole Star Wars is about explore. You know, yeah. you see a lot of cool planets, so you want to have another cool planet. So, yeah. you know, it makes sense to kind of have a a side quest mission to find a guy yeah. um, as the excuse to get off the planet. Like from a, from a plot, from a, from a movie construction standpoint, I totally get it. And I, I also think it's good that we see a, you know, a ritzy place in star Wars instead of, you know, the typical bars and hole in the wall establishments yeah. that reek of scum and villainy. Um, however, I, I think, I think it probably like from a entire plot perspective, like I don't know. I'm trying to think of. I guess the big thing was that we got DJ. Yeah, was the big thing that they got from there, yeah. and you know, it. I, I can see. I it kind of it kind of was a little bit out of nowhere and a little bit of a of a of a, of a detour. So I, in, in some ways, I'm sort of yeah. flip flopping on it. But on I will one say, hand I like it. But on one hand, I don't. I will really say weird. with my theory of the main theme of the film being mm -hmm. about um, the good, bad, the good, bad mm -hmm. dichotomy yeah. um, and institutions involved with that. Um, 
that is that one was probably important to say the nicest looking ones also have the CD undersides to them. Yeah. And that even though they are rich and high and not dirty and disgusting like DJ, you mm-hmm. can't trust the good ones because they think they're good, but they're not. Right. Because all of them were war profiteers. Yeah. Um, which is clearly stated. And that main point with the whole good, bad dichotomy. Um, mm-hmm. And also corruption and all that because, you know, freaking casinos. So that is also technically our cantina, nine, uh, our cantina for the film. Yeah. Because it's this, the, 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 the seedy evil place, even though yeah. it's the nicest looking of them all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, um, but I guess my point is I can, I can, I, I didn't mind it while I was watching the movie, but I think on further reflection, I can definitely see why people might mind it. And I did think it was yeah. a little, a little bit of a detour and you probably, there probably were ways to like not have that happen. Yeah. But I, I think, I think I understand why I understand why they did it. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not as familiar with film construction as I am with other media. So it's hard for me to like really yeah. conclusively be like, was that good? Was that bad? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day I'll come to a conclusion, but yeah. today is not that day. Yeah. Um, um, but I would uh, certainly defend it as best I could if I had to write a thesis on this film. Probably. Yeah. We're really waxing real philosophical. About this oh movie. yes. I oh. mean, I guess it does offer a lot of, or yeah. at least more than what force awakens offered when it came, when it comes to like thinking about stuff. I think. Yeah. By the way, Personally, I think shift more positive here. I think one of the best things in this movie is the chemistry, on-screen chemistry between Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver. They just but, but awesome. Before we get too far from there, I do need okay. to point out something you don't know, and probably most of anyone listening probably doesn't is might not be aware of. Okay. Uh, Mark Hamill had another role in this film, and it relates to the Casino Planet. Oh. I didn't. I don't know about that. Yeah, I didn't know either. Uh, okay. He plays uh, Dobuske, who was the character that mistook BB-8 as a slot machine. Oh my god, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's really funny. Yeah. I wonder why they double cast him for that. Hmm. I mean, it was a lot of CGI on it, so. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Maybe. Also, to be like, hey. Yeah, you can have two roles since this is going to be your last film. I mean, I guess you could still reappear in the yeah, force ghosting, the, but as like a force ghost. Yeah, or also so, to, a, or maybe because like you were in the last one, but you weren't in the last one. I mean, he was in the last one. Yeah, for like all of two seconds and never guess, spoke a fair. line. That's fair. That's a good point. I will say I do want to bring this up because I remember that I find it I still find it great. Um, yeah. When Mark Hamill had the script script for The Force Awakens, mm-hmm. uh, he was reading the part of like uh, Kylo Ren trying to pull um, Luke's lightsaber from the snow. Yeah. After slicing open uh, Finn's back. Yeah. And then he read, "It flies past." And it's like, "Oh, this is where I show up." And he was like, "Saw it was right." And it's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was going to be him that's great um, that's really funny yeah i mean that's why that seems like one of the best in the movie you're just like oh he's gonna oh nope yeah yes go, right? yes uh, um but uh continuing on um no um dj dj who i want to talk about um okay yeah because he is the shady shady guy of the group but he's the one that's the most truthful yeah, I think to an actually, extent, he does deceive and lie, but he is. I think what's really interesting at least about accepting DJ, of what the flaws with him are. He accepts yeah. the flaws. Yeah, I think what's really interesting about DJ is that he he's one of the few characters. I mean, Star Wars has very few characters that are sort of outside of the Jedi versus the First Order. You know, like outside of the main conflict. Yeah, he's very much a neutral character, which I think is is really well. Nice I think to see. until the end of the film. Well, yeah, but um, 
but like into the end of the film, but like like even so I think that DJ still is like a neutral character. Like he even said to himself, he's like, Yeah, I don't I don't he he played he didn't he wasn't I don't think he's aligned with the First Order in the way that the other Force Order members are. He yes. just sold them out because it was the best option. Yeah. And he goes with the best option. And I think that's really interesting character because he, because you, you sort of, because you can tell that like he, he's gonna, that's what he does. He, he tells you up front, I, I work with the best option and then that's what he does. And I think that's an interesting perspective that he doesn't really care too much about the conflict between the first order and the rebellion or the resistance. No, he just, he just wants to survive. Here's what, here's what I I think is a possibility Mm -hmm. for like his, uh, uh, his reasoning. He knows Mm -hmm. that the people that fund um, the war profiteering uh, made the the ships for both the for the first order and for yeah. the resistance. Right. He recognizes. Uh, he sees both sides as equals in terms of. He see he sees no difference between either side, yeah. and I think that also makes him a kind of a foil for Luke's character and his process of recognizing mm-hmm. the Jedi as flawed. Right. That Luke doesn't initially want to fight because Luke doesn't believe the Jedi deserve to live. Right. Don't deserve to exist. Mm-hmm. This because they have problems. Right. Even though with them around they can do more good. But still cause problems like Kylo Ren and all of that. Mm-hmm. And but at the film he at the end he recognizes, hey, we're still good. We just need to recognize where our flaws are and try to correct them as best as possible. Right. DJ, on the other hand, sees the flaws in both mm-hmm. and doesn't care to make any distinction. Hmm. And just goes with either side because he sees them as the same. Yeah. And just goes out for himself. So yeah. I, so in a way, they're a little bit of foil to each other, just different ways of interpreting, narr- of recognizing there is no one solid good, one solid evil. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting that, perspective on yeah. DJ as a character. And yeah, that, he, yeah. Yeah. Especially to make sure that like, they're not equals. Mm-hmm. And stay and with like Luke realizing that they even though there are problems, there are not equals. Mm-hmm. And there is an option that is better. Yeah. Than the other. Mm-hmm. Again, not perfect, but nothing will ever be perfect. You just have to recognize that is a thing. Which yeah. and honestly, I've been thinking most of this stuff with the sub with the with the Finn Poe plot. Yeah. Um, during this whole thing, and honestly, that that recognition of connection to the main plot, mm-hmm. to the Ray plot, yeah. makes me like that better. Um, right. Because yeah, I, I think those those theming connections probably make it yeah feel a little less like it's like two separate movies. Yes, because honestly, it, with with just looking at the plot themselves they are two separate entirely movies and anyone that has says oh they're pacing issues i i'm completely understandable of your complaints with that i admittedly did not recognize them but i may have been i may be to uh to have watched too many of the transformers films to <laughs> notice the pacing problems in this film your taste has curdled michael oh uh, yeah i mean i I think yeah, like I said, I think I can. To- I totally get the complaints about pacing issues. I think that, I think it is very hard to have this kind of movie construction. You know, like because you want Ray to have her, you know, training with Luke thing, but you also want the the rebels and the, the, the resistance. I mean, to be doing their thing too. And when they don't cross paths really at all into the end, it it can be a problem. So. Mm-hmm. I totally get that. 
yeah. Yes. Um, but but one thing again that I really wanted to bring back up is I think we should probably talk more about the Ray plot. Cause oh yeah, I was just gonna once we were done with this section, I was gonna f- move us back over that way. Okay, so let's move on back over that way. So the best thing with the Kylo and Ray plot <laughs> is how they were interacting throughout the entire time. Yeah, I think having them interact between through the Force was really great. Um, I think I really liked because like what really fascinated me about that the sequences was how it was shot. You know, like you think about like how do you express to the audience that these two people are communicating with each other but they're not in the same place. And like I think the fact that like they had all the sound like go out and like you know they were still they were facing each other within the shot but you could tell that they they couldn't really like they weren't in the same place like i don't know i just really liked how it was communicated and um i think i i really like how kylo i think adam driver did such a great job as kylo ren yes. i think he really got across this idea of this guy who's really conflicted about his place in all of this Mm-hmm. And how he acts as like a direct foil to Ray, because I, I think in some ways she's just conflicted about how she fits into everything. Oh, absolutely. Which... I think she's more of herself, maybe, but I think they're they're both sort of searching for answers, you know, and they're sort of approaching it in different ways. Yes, you know, um, whereas like, like Ray is trying to you know, search into the past by contacting Luke and sort of learn the ways of the force. Whereas Kylo Ren wants to move away from it mm. and escape it. And sort of how they're trying to answer this question of who am I? Yes. Um, and I, I also really liked that scene in the Snoke's throne room. Oh yes. Where they, fu- that was awesome. That was so cool. I mean, yeah, Snoke dies, and then they just fight, and you're like, oh, man, is he going to turn? Oh, man, what's going to happen? And then, like, and everything's burning, and, like, it's just so great. And then and then just the way that they're talking about, like, you know, and you can really tell that Kylo Ren wants Rey on his side, and not just because he's an asset to her, but because, or an asset to him, rather, mm-hmm. but because he he sees her as a valuable person who at least wa- under who at least doesn't dismiss him or understands that there's more to him than meets the eye. Transformers. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're never getting away from that, are we? Of course not. Uh. Um, so yeah, I don't. I I thought I thought the way he was talking about like you know her and. You know, because, like, typically when, like, an, a villain is trying to be, like, we can rule the galaxy, they have, like, this, like, really, like, you know, like, confident tone of voice. So mm-hmm. they're, like, look at all this power we could have. But, but I thought in that scene, Kylo Ren was in a more of a position of weakness. Like, he, he felt almost desperate, I think. Yeah, he even I was, like, join me, please. Yeah, like, he was almost like, please, I need someone on my side. <laughs> like, I need someone who gets me, and you're the only one I feel like who does. Yeah. And I, I, I that was a great moment, because I, I think it's so interesting to see him be this conflicted. Because, mm-hmm. like, I, in some ways, I feel like in Force Awakens, you kind of go, okay, this guy's, you know, your typical angsty teen ish guy like oh you know gotta write my emo poetry but but in this movie it feels a little more genuine i feel like mm-hmm. like i feel like his his conflictions and the and his his sort of the way he feel like like his inability to sort of reconcile his the way he feels about like the people he relates to versus what he's done is really good and it feels not like you know, someone who's just whining. It feels like someone who genuinely just wants he, who want he he just wants someone to love him, man. <laughs> or at least like 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 camaraderie. I, I don't necessarily. I'm not just like advocating for Ray and Kyla to be romantic interests, but like you know what I mean. Like like I want what's um, what's that ship name? Um, I think it's Raylo. Be, I think. Yeah, I I don't I don't I I'm not. But why I say by by love, I mean like someone who supports him. Mm-hmm. You know, like someone who's and like I, I granted his family did, but I feel like I don't know. I feel like I feel like 
he thinks that Ray is more like him than anyone else because they both have like this untapped. They both have this connection, which I mean, and I I think. Hmm? I mean, I, you can finish, but. Um, I. It it kind of flew out of my 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 brain. Okay. So, you, uh, so what you I, was say, I mean, especially, it's especially important for him uh, to find someone that uh, validates him because. I mean, we know the backstory of why he became Kylo Ren. Yeah. He, he, he Luke was kind of thinking of murdering the kid. <laughs> yeah. Of... And I mean, like, oh, he, a pair, he already, we, we still don't know exactly how he was seduced to the dark side. We knew, he. Uh, all we get is that uh, Luke knew that Snoke was already toying with him. Right. Um, we still don't know, like, how or why how or though. why or who snoke is yeah that's probably one of the other criticisms that i totally get is people are like who the hell was snoke so that's never really addressed i mean we never really knew who palpatine was in the original trilogy so fair 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 he was palpatine was kind of just the emperor so i think fair it, point i I, I mean, it's also been a while since I saw the original trilogy, but I feel like there may have been a little more to be like, I rebuilt you or something, maybe. I'm not positive, but at the very least, it's about as vague as Snoke Kylo. Yeah, yeah. and I, Except I for think, the fact that somehow... Maybe the, sorry. the problem might be that like Snoke's a little less intimidating, I think, than the Emperor. Yeah, because... You we, know, like... the. Like the emperor was in the original trilogy was was frail and decrepit, but you kind of got this aura of like he could like waggle a finger and utterly destroy you. <laughs> I don't know if I get that from Snoke. Like I, I guess he's he feels more like I don't know. He has some kind of complex, certainly, because I mean he has yeah. massive holograms of himself. Yeah, everywhere. He feel he feels a little. I don't know exactly what kind. He feels a little more skeevy as a villain, like the kind of. Like a skeevy villain rather than a threatening one, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like he, he, like the emperor feels more like like a dark force you shouldn't meddle with, whereas, where, whereas Snoke feels more like uh more like the guy you shouldn't do money dealings with, which I, I guess are both both can be threatening in their own yeah. way. But I, I think Snoke's a little different, and so I think that kind of throws people off a bit. Honest, okay. I am. You made me make an interesting comparison in my head, but it only makes sense to tra any Transformers fans listening. Say it, man. I'll, it, I'll how you were describing him makes me think of Palpatine as the Fallen and Snoke as Liege Maximo. Yeah, you, I will not as if I understand that comparison. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll give you the context, Alyssa, and for anyone else listening that doesn't understand what I'm saying. So the Fallen was... The first of the 13 that was presented as the betrayer of the original mm -hmm. 13 primes. Yeah. And the first Cybertronians. Um, he, was present, he was basically presented as the Judas, the one that betrayed them to uh, the right. dark god who betrayed and mm -hmm. them to the dark god Unicron and became his most loyal minion. Mm -hmm. And then, but we never had a fully canonized list of 13 until a few years ago. And in that, we got Liege Maximo. Um, mm -hmm. Well, he was around before, but um, he was like properly canonized and like explained his role in the 13. And mm -hmm. he was basically the conniver, the schemer, the trickster, you know, right. the Loki. And he was the one that led Megatronus, the original name of the Fallen, to become the Fallen. So, okay. And so that's the. And certainly, yeah, I think I got, I get, I think I got your. your, your train of thought right there yeah i mean it's certainly not a direct comparison but like in terms of their portrayal in terms of how what their evil is that's the comparison mm -hmm. yeah um so i also um i i kind of i mean like on one hand i'm i'm frustrated that we don't know more about snoke but on the other hand i i'm kind of happy that we have kylo ren as like the the now the center bad guy mm-hmm I think that makes a little more sense. I think I think it, it makes sense for his character and also just to try just to not always de replicate like the previous movies. I feel okay. like that makes sense. But I'm going to say this 
this mm-hmm. mirrors the original films. It does. Because it does. in the first one, Darth Vader was the bad guy. Yeah. And then we got some of Palpatine. Yeah. In the in the fifth, and then we knew, oh, he has a higher power, but Darth Vader's still like the bad guy. And then the sixth one, Palpatine yeah. was the main bad guy. Yeah. So in this one, it was like, so like in the first one, we knew um, Snoke was always in charge. Yeah. This one, Snoke was in charge, and then he X'd him off, and then um, Kylo became in charge. And then presumably in the ninth one, Kylo will be the only one in charge. So it kind of reverses in terms of yeah. how much and, and interaction we get I'm, out of Snoke. Speaking of that, I'm, I'm real interested to see what Hux does. <laughs> Because Hux was definitely, is definitely. I think, I think I can see a coup in his eyes. Yeah, but the question he, he is, he seems a little suspicious. I mean, I, 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 he, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I I'm interested to see if if he tries anything. Because yeah. they definitely, you can tell that there's some tension between Kylo Ren and him. Oh, what there was, there was definitely no tension, especially not the part where Kylo was unconscious on the ground and General Hux was out about ready to bring out a blaster to shoot Kylo dead. Yeah, paralleling, so that's gonna be paralleling Luke's to betrayal see. of Kylo and Kylo just missing that betrayal. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of something else of other things that um, relate to this to talk about. I want to go back to talking about my good, the good bad dichotomy in this. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Because we got two force users who, in Luke's eyes, in terms of their raw power, mm-hmm. are the same. Yeah, and we see how one falls to the dark side and how one falls to the light side. Mm-hmm. And in their, and in that, and in their contacts between each other Mm -hmm. we see the weaving into the gray areas yes we see kylo trying to be kind and truthful and honest yeah to ray and we also Mm -hmm. see ray be vengeful and in in curious and willing to do whatever it takes to get the answer she wants yeah and yeah, I definitely see that. Um, we understand, and it just more so solidifies. Well, I'm pampering home with this. The mm-hmm. main theme of looking at a good bad dichotomy and saying it is not pure, it is not a pure yeah. dichotomy. But yeah, but still, they both recognize where the good parts are and where the bad parts are. And Ray recognizes where the good parts are and notices where the bad parts are but still thinks the mm-hmm. Jedi are good enough as long as they keep that in mind yeah. to continue existing. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. What was I? Oh, um, so this is going to be a total 180. Is it all right if I do a total 180 right now? Sure. Um, what did you think of Finn and Rose's romance? Or is them as like a romantic couple? Because I, oh well, I'll let you. I'll let you say say your piece first, and then I'll. I'll I only see it from Rose's perspective. Yeah, I see. Fi- I see from Finn that he thinks Rose is a good friend, and mm. it's the kiss that throws me off with Rose. It's, the kiss is the <sighs> only indication that like she thinks of Finn as that good of enough of a friend to be in a dedicated relationship yeah but there's no other indi- I, there's not like any other real strong indications except maybe the writing on the creature on the casino planet mm-hmm. that's about it but she was also in front and she was just enjoying the ride and finn was like oh don't don't laugh at this yeah uh i um i thought that the kiss was a little weird i was like it felt kind of. I was like, "Oh, it's really so." I was like, "Well, this is a Disney production, so I guess, I guess this makes sense." Yeah. Huh? Uh, sure, but be quiet, please. <laughs> Sorry, that, that was my sister. Um. Uh, yeah. So, basically, I, I just, I don't know. I, I was like, this is just so out of left field. 
Because yeah. I, I didn't really, like you said, there really wasn't much in the way of indication that that was ever going to be a thing. You yeah. know, I mean, the only, I mean, granted, the only real, there weren't really too many romantic subplots in this movie. I guess the biggest one is between Finn and Ray. But even that is... Finn and Ray? Really? Pretty. Well, from Force Awakens, there was like a slight... I mean, I, I, that's the only one that has, like, to me, any, like, that I could, like, detect is, oh, they're probably trying to, like, test this out as, like, they're, they're, they're putting in a little bit of romance, a little bit. Okay, I thought you were talking um, about The Last Jedi, because the only thing they did was hug platonically as friends at the end of this film. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm referring to, to, to Force Awakens. Um, yeah, I, I just, I, you know, and even then, even in that movie, in the context of that movie, most of what happens between them can just be between good friends. Like, yes. there wasn't anything that, like, totally indicated to me, like, oh, they're definitely flirting with each other or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I, so in that case, it was kind of like, I wasn't expecting them to, like, kind of toss in another one. Uh, and... I don't know. I, I, I I was just really confused and I don't necessarily know if like that was necessary. I feel like I probably would have preferred for her to have been for her and like Finn and Rose to be more just friends, especially since they only know knew each other for like, what, not even a day. So 18 hours, (laughs) But that's, that's a nitpick, I suppose. 18 hours. I think the timeline is. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah okay uh what else what else what else what else should we bring up and talk about oh um how did you think about uh the final battle between Connor Cameron and Luke Skywalker like what did you think about that oh my good oh my goodness <laughs> that I was like me too I was like oh <laughs> the, the- I was so invested and involved and I was like, oh yes, that is Luke. That is Luke right there. The only things that made me question myself were like, Luke didn't look that young throughout the rest of the film, did he? Yeah. And I also, I... and also yeah. when he pulled out the lightsaber, it's was like, wait, that's the wrong lightsaber. His lightsaber <laughs> should be green. The, the blue one got exploded. Yeah. Um, I, it's really weird because it is funny because I know I think you probably picked up more on the details than I did, which is weird because I don't know. Like, like I think it's, I think it's interesting because um, when I I mean, I, I thought something was off, but I, I probably couldn't tell you what it was. And I think most of that was just because, like, the idea of someone like astral projecting themselves across the galaxy yeah. is like a, a, a what like, you, that's that was that's never been seen in any of the other movies so yeah. you're like you don't really think of that as a possibility until it until it's revealed that it is that 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 is indeed the case yeah but I, and the, then you're just like what <laughs> yeah but even with that i still settled myself in and was ready for the cool fight scene oh yeah i didn't too. i didn't even like that didn't even like draw me out of the moment. That was like just a thought that crossed my head. It was like, oh, never mind. We're gonna fight now. I can worry. I can worry about about plot continuity later. And then it was answered for me, regardless. So yeah, and I think and I think that that's that's a good example of like when a twist happens, it's making sense after it happens. Yeah. You know, like all of the evidence points towards that being the case it's not like a oh no suddenly this comes out of nowhere it's like well no there were these there were these evidences that were pointing towards it before and so an astute viewer could figure out oh hey that might be what's happening yes and i think i i saw someone on on uh on on like on the interwebs saying um that like they had watched it multiple times and they noticed that, you know, when, when Luke's walking out, there's no footprints. Cause like everyone else who's oh. walking out, they leave. a oh, footprint. Oh because goodness. The, yes. Be, because the, the salt lifts up, but with Luke, there was none, which I was like, that's, that's awesome. That's like the kind of details that you love in, mm. in movies, like the little small stuff that you're like, 
awesome. Yes. So yeah, I thought that whole sequence was great. And I thought that the the banner between them was also great. You know, you know, Kylo Ren trying to act a little tough and being like, you're dead, but him being like, everything you just said about that sentence is wrong. Just how cool he acted. Like, yeah, I just, I was awesome. Also the shots too, mm-hmm. like that, the whole, the whole shots of him standing with the uh, AT-ATs or AT-ATs, whichever, yeah. however they're called, like in front of him being like shown in shadow and him being shadow because of the sunset. I was like, that's such a cool shot. Yes. Oh my goodness. I feel, I feel the weight of the scenario. Uh, this movie is just so beautiful. Like I can't, I can't say, stress that enough. Also, like I, f- sorry. Mm? Also the first, I feel like, I, Oh, you go, you the, go. The, the, the freaking parallel line. I can't, I'm so upset at myself. I can't remember the line completely, but he, he paraphrased the strike me down and, Line. Oh, uh, uh, he said, um, if you strike me down now, oh, I forget what he, oh, if you strike, strike me in anger and I'll never leave you or something. Yes. Something along those lines. Yes. I was and like, I thought he was dead know, at that point too. I, I genuinely thought up. he was dead at that point. And then we were like, oh, he's actually protecting. And like, yes, he lives. And then he still died anyway. <laughs> I, you know, I don't actually mind that. No. I, th- I think that it made sense. I think that it, you know, it was... It you know, it just it made sense, and the whole Tatooine callback mm-hmm. that was great too. Yeah, I love that. I love that that part as well. This movie's so well shot. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, speaking of callbacks, I I was really touched by you know R two playing when when R two and and. Luke meet up again, and then he yeah. plays the old, the old recording of, of Leia calling for Obi-Wan for help. I was yeah. just like, oh, don't do this to me, movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how, like, Luke Schlemshays it and is like, that was a, that was a cheap trick. <laughs> like, yeah. But, like, it works. It not only – it doesn't feel – but it doesn't feel like a cheap reference. Like, it feels mm-hmm. like something that would naturally happen, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. like R2's point of – you know, people needed you. Like you're in the same situation Obi Wan was in as the last Jedi and someone that people know. And Leia needs you. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it make it made sense for them to use that again. And and oh, it's just great. That yeah. was a, I, I like that scene a lot. Yeah. Uh, what I know this is actually a reference now, but mm-hmm. what I thought was a cheap thing. Was mm-hmm. the the Han Solo dice? Yeah. But yeah. here's the thing: I, I thought they, I thought that was a created whole cloth for this film. But it turns out, I looked up, looked it up, that mm-hmm. they were there during the first movie, the original movie. Oh, oh, they were okay. They actually were, but they were not there for five and six. Huh. There was actually, I saw, and I also saw an image of them. And they mm-hmm. look the exact same, except for the fact they're like actual Earth dice with the actual dots on the side, and this one looked like it had alien letters on it. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, now I'm just conflicted on that because that was a thing that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it's a thing that actually exists, but they did change it to be different from what the it was, and it was barely noticed yeah like they didn't i think what was weird about that was that when when you know luke pulled that down i'm like that that's not a significant like you think he pulled something down like that it would be significant like the audience would be like like especially people who watch the original show would be like oh i know what that is you know like it being of emotional or important significance or I mean, it might have made more sense if like han had those or like pulled those dice down like in the original movie like in the force awakens yeah. and was like you know, this is important to me or something. Yeah, like yeah, if like and then that, if and that then was that introduced that in the Force that Awakens. Gap. Hmm? If that what was introduced in the Force Awakens, that totally made sense and I'd be content. However, this movie had a new director, so Yeah. I think that probably might explain some of the inconsistencies that happened. Yeah. Just because like I mean I guess then the the argument is like, well, you know, Empire Strikes Back was consistent to some to most degrees with a new hope and those two movies had different directors Mm -hmm. 
like George Lucas, I believe, directed A New Hope, but there was a different director on board for Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, but I mean, George Lucas so, was still heading the whole thing, and that was his project child, so... That's true, that's true. He was still the creative director, yeah. so... Um, but there probably is some, there might've been some things lost in translation between the transfer. So, yeah. uh, it's that, that I do agree that that, that element probably could have been cut. Yeah. Cause it doesn't really have any significance to anything else aside from, Oh, Hey, yeah, here's some dice. Yeah. And definite. And while we're on this point, um, when I first came out of the movie, there were two things that I didn't, that I can definitely point to that I didn't like. One was the dice. Okay. Two was the porgs. I will say, <laughs> the, the oh, Porgs why, why are did... cute and adorable, and I completely understand that they were they existed because they didn't want to digitally erase all of the puffins on the island, so that was a cutover. But in terms <laughs> of the plot, they were utterly pointless. Oh, of course. Oh, that, that's that's the only reason. Be... That's the only reason I. That's the only reason I quote unquote dislike the porgs. I only dislike the porgs in the fact they serve no plot relevance, yet they still appeared later on in the plot. Like if they were contained that's, that's to fair. the island, I would have had no problems. But there was the one that appeared on the ship later during the battle and it did absolutely nothing. I love the porgs. They're yeah, that, so that, cute. That, They're so fair. adorable. But I don't like <laughs> but that, I, I knew but they they're completely puppies, unnecessary though. for this film. Like I I when I first saw them, I was like, "These guys remind me a lot of puffins," but I, I didn't even I didn't even make the connection that oh, they're based on the pu- they're based on puffins because they literally are standards for puffins. Yes, because like, they I were didn't on draw the that connection. They were all um, like because I I've been to Iceland, so I've seen like puffins in real life, and they're they're adorable, and they're 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 so quirky. And they to- porgs are totally like puffins. Like yeah. I, I totally buy that that they're the Star Wars version of puffins. But I mean, they are I, the Star Wars version you, of like, puffins. What they are what? the Star Wars version of puffins. Every porg that was in the film was a puffin in real life. Well, yeah, I know, but like, but I just, oh my god, that just makes me so much. That just makes me happy. But the other that, thing like, I say, they were like, we need to Star Warsify these puffins that are all over the island. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. But I still got to say, I may have also disliked the bit, the fact that it was really freaking obvious to tell which ones were fake, which ones were di- were CGI porgs, and which ones were animatronics. Yeah. Like puppets. It was, I guess that's kind of unavoidable when you have both practical and CGI effects. Yeah. Uh, Yoda was a puppet, though. Yeah, I mean, he was always a puppet. Yeah, Yoda was in this. Oh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't even mention that Yoda... Uh, by the way, Yoda. Yeah. He exists. Yeah. He shows up for, like, a couple seconds. And not I, really. That, that's not Was fair. I he, talking he to you up. about not liking the dissonance of the character portrayal? Say that again? I remember I was talking to someone, and they were like, Yoda was is different than he's been portrayed most of the time, because most of his portrayals were in the prequel trilogies, where he's a serious old wise sensei while in like the the original trilogy he's a little bit of like he is a wise old sensei but he's also a hermit and a little bit of a coot yeah i think that this that this movie probably waxes more towards the the original trilogy's portrayal of yoda which i mean makes sense because that that's canonically after that and the prequels were canonically yeah. before that so. and like i mean you have to remember that like sometimes yoda just didn't like like in, the, in in Empire Strikes Back, he like was really blunt with Luke at points. Yeah, and I mean there was a whole scene where he pretended he didn't know what was going on. Like, oh, who's this Yoda person? I don't know yeah. who he is. I can't I can't <laughs> remember like, okay. who I talked about. I who, talk, who I talked to that about. But someone was someone I was talking to was not like content that like oh it was my friend it was my friend Megan that's who it was mm-hmm. I think yeah um but yeah because. Yeah, I already made my point, but like, I still liked how they. I think Yoda made sense because he still, he was on a he was on like a swamp planet for thirty years by himself or something like that. Nineteen. Yeah, 19. yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't think I had any like real problems with Yoda's portrayal. I mean, like, I, 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 I granted, like, I think both of us have said we didn't. It's been a while since I've watched like. Yeah. 
I mean, the last time I saw in First Strikes Back, it was in a crowded cafeteria. So like, <laughs> and it was sort of in the background. So like, I, I can't, I can't say I remember everything or like, yeah. it's not fresh in my memory, but I don't know. I still think that Yoda, Yoda still had that essence of like guy who knows a lot, but at the same time, yeah. and I, I feel like his, his sort of idea of, you know, it's okay to burn down the Jedi temple makes sense. Cause like, I think he, he has that sort of like Buddhist ish idea of like material possessions aren't that aren't as important as like the soul, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, at the end of the day, they're just, they're just books. They don't matter as much as, you know, the people who the books are about and what you teach the people mm-hmm. that, that doesn't matter as much. And I think that that, that, that makes sense. And I, I again, I, I still feel like, I don't know, Maybe some, you know, person who's more versed in Star Wars than me has a better opinion on <laughs> on Yoda's portrayal, but I thought he was fine. I enjoyed him, yeah. his presence. I was happy he was there. Yeah. Also, I was, like, real shocked that he was able to just lightning, just yeah. snap his, not snap his fingers, but just kind of like, I guess I'm like God now. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's probably astral projecting from the afterlife, so. Yeah. No, I mean, like. I, I, it made sense. I was in the lore of Star Wars. You yeah. know, he's a powerful Jedi Master. Yes. Totally, totally. I totally buy the fact that he can summon lightning a will. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I I liked him. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was that was that was that. good that he was there, and also by yeah. voiced by Frank Oz, like in the originals. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, the point? score is awesome. As always. John Williams is amazing. As always. He is a legend at this point, and I don't know if I can take him do I don't know. Have I ever heard a bad John Williams score? Mm, probably not. I mean, there's probably some that are a little not as good. or not as, not as good, but I don't know if he's ever made a bomb mm-hmm. music score-wise before. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm like real happy with, uh, with his score in these movies, um, some great work. Um, what else? Oh, other thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, Mm -hmm. what did you think about Leia in this movie? Cause I feel like the unfortunate thing about this movie is that it came out after Kate Fisher's death and you sort of had this cloud looming over your head of like, when is she going to pass away in this movie? Yeah. I admittedly like, thought that when she, when that fir- when um, she was in the medical bay, yeah. But I did remember that all of the filming had been done before she passed, and the fi- right. So it's not like they could refilm anything, right? So they had to keep everything the way it originally was. Yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, obviously that's not. I don't think that's at any any fault of the movies, mm. you know. Like yeah. obviously, if you know Carrie Fisher's death's very tragic, and yeah. they couldn't have planned for that. But of course, it, it's just it's so unfortunate because like you're watching it. I was watching it. and I kind of had it in my back of my mind of like, are they going to write her out in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, how are they going to handle her death? They're probably going to have to you pull know, what they did with um, Leonard Nimoy and the Star Trek thing, where it's just like... Probably. Yeah, I think they'll probably do an off-screen thing. Yeah. I, I know that uh, some news recently came out that the Carrie Fisher's family gave uh, the Star Wars crew permission to use like pre-recorded footage of her in the movies if they wanted to. Yeah. yeah um, I was actually just reading I, about that. Um, I think they said that they weren't they they did they did say that they weren't planning on digitally recreating her yeah the fisher's family um which i probably think is welcome yeah fisher's <laughs> like, family CGI granted the rights to way, but i don't know if we've gotten past the uncanny valley in some care yeah. some instances so yeah but they have also it has also been stated that even though they gave her they gave the filmmakers the rights to use recent footage of her um she will not appear at all in the film Okay. Yeah. And yeah. That, so they're probably all the way back in January. They said they had no intention of digitally recreating her like they did with um, whoever they did it for for Rogue One. I think it was Grandma Car- Yeah. Grandma Tarfin's character. I forget the actor's name, but yeah, he. You know, I, I think he died actually a while ago. But 
Yeah, they, yeah. they digitally re- recreated him. I know that. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie though, but I've heard people say that it looks really weird. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, that also would get just get into a very slippery slope of digitally bringing people back from the dead and potentially having them in parts and roles and saying and doing things that they would not agree or want to. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm I think glad it does they're make going sense. with this choice. And, I'll, and even though, I think it's a, it's a, what? Sorry. Even though like it'd be nice to see General Leia in episode nine, I'm glad they're going with this choice. Yeah, same here. I think it it just it's just better to you know <laughs> you know deal deal with her death in a way that is more respectful. And I totally understand and I I definitely agree with the idea that they won't attempt to put her in the movie or you know. So what are your um, so question though? Yeah. You think Poe's going to be in the head, the head of the resistance because of that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to deal with cuz I I really hope that they follow through with some in some ways with his sort of him being demoted and then also staging a military coup having to like sort of learn that lesson i mean um, leia, leia was giving it'll be interesting i don't i'm not entirely sure what they're gonna do with him i mean leia was allowing him to give the orders at the end of the film that's true and and, I th- and admittedly we'll i'm going to say this han died in the in force awakens yep luke died in the last jedi yep i'm positive leia's plot would have have her, have ended with her dying at the end of number nine Probably. I, I feel like they were probably gearing up for her to go. Yeah. Because, you again, know, these films of... are also, as, again, part of the the meta, meta theming of this is that these films are also to bring in a new generation of fans to the Star Wars franchise rather than yeah. just purely catering to the old fans. And I, and I think that I think that makes sense from a story perspective, too. I mean, these guys are old so it sort of makes sense to sort of have them come back but then also kind of be yeah yeah you know is that that sounds mm-hmm. like a really weird term uh but yeah i i think that they were probably planning on having her either not necessarily maybe die but like in some ways go so yeah uh yeah i i guess i just it's just really, a, it's just really upsetting that while well, I was watching the movie, that that kind of hung over things. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things that we might have missed. Is there anything that you're, you're like not getting that we might not have addressed? But we do probably want to wrap this up. So probably, I don't know so. how long we've been talking for, but I'm sure it's 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 been been maybe too long. Yeah, we're approaching our our longest times so cool okay um, but i mean there's a lot to talk about with this movie so. oh absolutely of course definitely just don't want it to go so, as long oh, as b- the movie. before we go uh any last words from you or me this was a very good film the people who are making that petition are idiots um more so not because to say that their opinion is wrong because Mm -hmm. that is a genuine opinion of not liking the portrayal of Luke and the Jedi in this film, but they Mm -hmm. are idiots for trying to convince Disney to strike it from the canon because they didn't like it, even though other people liked it and other people enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I also do highly recommend this movie. Um, I think that there's a lot of really great, just visually stunning scenes in this movie, especially among Star Wars films. Like there are some eye popping stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I also um, really, and I also think again, I would encourage people to judge the movie for what it is rather than what for they want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I also definitely understand if like if you're, I feel like if you if you're really into like the, if you get really lost in like the logic of stuff and like you, you, you're the kind of person who 
who, who who's inclined to see plot holes and stuff, I think that some of it probably doesn't jive as well as it could have, and that might that might make the film a little less enjoyable for you um but if if you're totally if you buy into the characters if you're if you enjoy them if you if you're you know you get sucked into the world of star wars and you really and you like the force awakens i think there's a good chance you like this movie too um <clears throat> yeah yeah i think that's all i want to say yeah. yeah definite definite high approval on from us i'm i say yeah and I've even heard people that saw it the first time and were not thrilled by it, then went to see it back and were like, you know what? I do love this film. So mm. if you didn't like it the first time, maybe you just need to go see it again. And I do say it is worth going to see again. And I may try to if I get the chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's all there that we have to say on this film. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at soundjack426. Also, please consider donating on my Patreon page to help support the channel. All the links will be in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. This is Soundjack and Alyssa signing off.